out what's happening now. Elvis, it is 9.06 a.m. right now. So I'm just headed to East Hastings Street. Apparently this is gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> Kimberly, hey, pleasure to see you. Bashir, what's going on? Hey, thanks for the likes. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wandering, are you gonna be down here today? Apparently, Like locals are probably aware of this, but they're like leaked documents. Somebody, somebody within the city of Vancouver, they actually leaked documents that they were gonna escalate the whole decampment, eviction of unhoused people thing, and it was gonna happen. Like some people of Vandu, I think they suspect it was gonna happen yesterday, but it's probably gonna happen today. Lexi, what's going on? Kimberly, thanks for sharing. Of course, feel free to <laughs> feel free to stop by. Amanda, what's going on? Thanks for the likes. <clears throat> yeah, cool. You're gonna are you gonna be in the downtown east side or something? <clears throat> Jamie, what's going on? Hey, this is where the fire took place. Check that building out. Brown eyes doing awesome so far. How you doing? <coughs> yeah, I'm not totally sure though. Sean, how's it going? So yeah, it's gonna happen sometime this week. Foxy Miss Moxley, some of you might know her. She's like a, she does advocate stuff in this area. She's got a TikTok account as well. She does lives and stuff sometimes from the area. Yeah, she was saying she works at a, one of the dental clinics on Hastings Street and apparently all the businesses in this area got a memo that there's going to be like a huge police operation going on this week. Rent, rent, it can go, it can be anywhere from like a thousand dollars to two, three thousand dollars. It's crazy, there's barely any affordable homes. That's part of the problem, that's why there's such a large, that's a big reason why there's such an un, unhoused, such a large unhoused population in BC. Oh yeah, it looks like, it. oh shit, they already, oh. I'm gonna make a run for it, I think. It's already happening. I see police sirens up ahead. I see flashing, I see plenty of flashing lights up ahead. Yeah, the insane thing is, like, it's probably been one of the worst, like, thought out kind of plans that the city's come up. There basically is no plan, right? Since, since last summer, the excuse they've been using is tents pose like a fire risk that's what they've been saying but it's the same thing with SROs like there last year there was like a record sending setting number of SRO fires multiple people died and they haven't been any they haven't been doing anything pretty much to ensure like fire safety in SROs but yeah, it's, it's pretty much just an excuse to remove the unhoused people from here I know exactly anybody that's not familiar with SROs it stands for single room occupancy and most of them are terrible we used to live in one we recently just moved well it wasn't technically it wasn't an SRO it was more of an apartment but yeah the SROs are like most of them are horrible like they're run by slum lords almost all of them they got everything from pests like bed bug infestations cockroach infestations like some of them are just totally falling apart too water damage plumbing issues electrical issues it's crazy angie what's going on okay yeah i see the cops up ahead oh yeah it's a huge operation oh God. hey 
you gonna be alright? You good? Do you want any like paramedics or anything? You good? Mm -hmm. Paramedics or anything? You good? Hey, Carol, what's going on? Pleasure to see you. How's your day going so far? <coughs> oh, shit. Yo, when did this whole thing... It actually looks like it's been going on for a while now. I thought it was going to start at 9 a.m. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really? Oh shit. Oh, that's crazy, man. Are you gonna be down there? Yeah, that guy's awesome. Apparently, he's a like some kind of support worker or something. He just said that. He just said that what he heard was they're gonna take down the tents by any means necessary. That includes using force. I don't know. It's possible there's gonna be like a. People are gonna get arrested, it's possible. Yo, look at all these. <coughs> Yo, okay, so Foxy's information was correct. It is gonna happen today, obviously. <coughs> hey, are you okay? Is she gonna be okay? Okay, Carol, exactly, it's crazy. Like the only safe place right now for on house people to go is Crap Park. There's a bit of an encampment set up over there. I think like 20, 30 people. They were trying to kick them out of there too. Get a court injunction against them, but the court denied it. The court actually said that it's violating their rights. To remove them from the park because there's no like alternative accessible affordable housing available so that's pretty much the only place that they're safe but yeah check oh that's crazy how many cops there are already <laughs> hey what i apologize about the shakiness of the camera too it's gonna, I don't have my gimbal on right now. I'm gonna put it on probably. Oh, there they are. There you have the city workers. Uh, oh, that's. And another thing they've been doing is they're, they're so afraid of accountability and cameras that whenever they do one of these eviction operations, they try to, they shut down most of the sidewalk so that people so that people don't really have access to that area and you have to film from like across the street because again, they don't want to be overheard. They don't want to be held accountable. And another thing, all these employees, they're publicly and publicly funded employees, but none of them have like badges, ID numbers, none of that. Hey, what's going on? Fox season here. Hey, thanks for the tip off. Thanks for letting me know it was going to happen today. I wasn't sure. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of cops. Nice. Yo, and they, they did this at Toronto as well. There are a Apparently there are two or three park encampments at Toronto and last year they pretty much Hey, I'm doing there. Oh, hey, yeah. pretty good man, how hey, you doing? You're gonna have to come out of the block unless you live in here or you got business, okay? Huh? You got some business here? Yeah. Cool. Where are you going? Uh, ah, I'm just I'm just filming okay, this whole thing. See look at this, they don't want they're afraid of witnesses, so <laughs> they're afraid of witnesses, so they're trying to they're gonna block off this entire this entire thing is going to be blocked off. Yo, look at the number of cops. Again, this is, they're trying to criminalize homelessness. They're trying to criminalize mental health. Like, this isn't a crime. These people, most of these people, 
they've committed no crime they don't even want to be on the streets right if there were alternatives available they would be out of here they would be the first ones to leave there's no reason for this huge of a police presence to be here there's pretty much like a militarized response to homeless people like it's crazy yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and find some cracks in the. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get past. Yo, that's crazy. And this whole uh, this whole like operation is probably gonna cost like in the millions of dollars. Like instead of using that money to actually help the unhoused person, again, they're just using it to, get to displace them, even though most of them have nowhere to go. Like it's crazy the amount of money being wasted, the amount of resources being wasted. What a troll, you feel for the businesses there? I think human lives are more important than profits. To check that side of the street out oh look at that they got so i think they're gonna all try to do it today there's got to be at least 30 40 cops here maybe more than that it's crazy they're probably gonna be here they've been covering they've actually done a good job of covering the whole decampment stuff hey how's it going So it's obvious they know again they don't want their misconduct possible misconduct likely misconduct being caught on camera that's why they're blocking this entire thing off they don't want witnesses they don't want this stuff being broadcast Troll's gonna get booted. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on this. Record from above. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe go go into Carnegie. I don't know if they're gonna get hostile again or something, but yeah, you could go to like Carnegie and film from the top floor, possibly, or one of these other buildings. <coughs> Possible troll. So this is exactly like when they first started doing this eviction operations in the, in the summertime. This is what it looked like, and that it ended. There ended up being like a mini riot because the cops escalated pretty much the entire situation. They were looking for any excuse. To like start falsely arresting people. You got by I think bylaws here. So they're, they're evicting the unhoused people. Like all of the unhoused people in this area. Again, most of them. This is Vancouver, one of the most expensive cities in the world. There aren't enough shelter spaces. There aren't enough affordable housing spaces. As far as like BC housing and stuff goes. Like there have been people that have been on the wait list for like 10 years and they still haven't gotten in. So it's a crazy, there's a housing crisis going on here along with a mental health crisis. Addictions crisis, among other things. Yeah, so not only is there probably going to be force used in evicting some of these unhoused people, but it's possible people's things, possessions are going to get thrown away. People's tents are gonna get damaged, thrown away. It's happened in the past. And that female cop you see over there, she was actually part of the, I filmed it a while ago. The cops along with the SPCA, they were actually going around Hastings Street trying to confiscate pets from unhoused people. So yeah, it's, it's crazy the amount of harassment they face. Hey, sorry, uh, 
They got fire rescue here as well. Yeah, yeah that's a nice outfit for that dog. Yo, what is that supposed to Yeah, exactly. And remember, looking at this, you would think this was a crime scene, right? You would think maybe there was a shooting that happened, maybe the stabbing that happened. That would explain the huge police presence here. But no, there's been no crime committed here. It's how unhoused people getting evicted even though they have nowhere to go. All of this, this gigantic police response for unhoused people. That's insane. Hey, Ginger, what's happening? Joe's gonna get booted. So, uh, appar apparently residents living in this area, even they're being denied access to their homes now, I think. <laughs> what the? That's crazy. Hey, there's people recording from the window too. That's a good. Yo, is there anybody that lives in one of these, like high-rise places that would give me access to film from your window? <laughs> I need like a high vantage point. Hey, they got photographers and stuff here. Again, most of these cops, they're getting paid thousands of dollars to do what exactly? Again, harass, unhouse people every chance they get and just stand around doing as little as possible. Like, how much? Like, there's so many better ways this money could be spent. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's playing bad boys. I know they're trying to they're trying to intimidate unhoused vulnerable people. It's insane. Yeah. Like look at this. It's like a military approach to homeless people. Yeah. It's crazy. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for the city. It's embarrassing for the cops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna jog around and go to the other side and try and get a better view. Yeah, I, apo I apologize. The screen's gonna actually. Yeah, I can probably put my gimbal on now. Hey, sorry. Yeah, actually, no, no. I won't put the gimbal on now, but yeah, it's gonna be kind of shaky for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> I don't know, at least make yourself useful in some way. You're getting paid thousands of dollars. Oh, hey. Oh. Okay. Hey. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, any any new subs <coughs> any new subscribers? Thank you, appreciate it. Anyone that shared the live likes, appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna jog real quick. Oh shit, maybe this alleyway. You can actually get a decent view from this alleyway. Hey, how's it going? Uh, huh? 
No, no. Can you see what's going on from here? I'm trying to... Yeah, I know. They're taking the tents down and stuff. Oh, actually, no. I don't want to go in that alley with... Oh shit, so they have the road blocked off all the way hey, okay. All the way to Chinatown Okay, right, let's see Wow, look at that See that they got even this sidewalk That's how afraid they are of witnesses of accountability they got this sidewalk closed off as well, even though there's nothing even happening because they don't want anyone to get a view of what's happening. There's nothing even happening on the street. Yeah, they got this closed off as well. <coughs> this is embarrassing. Look at all these cops just standing around. embarrassing if there's got to be at least 60 cops here <laughs> it's like half the departments here and it's all for to invict unhoused people to <laughs> what and most of them are doing next to nothing yeah hey, they're talking about tiktok they know they know they're live on tiktok mm. okay so there's people walking I think she works there. No, no, exactly. They might as well just... They might as well get some lawn chairs. <laughs> kick, kick up their feet. Have a few margaritas or something. Troll. That's fear mongering. I mean... Okay, then what? Okay, apparently this isn't closed off. Yeah, no, I was actually surprised they, I was actually surprised they didn't take that approach, like doing it overnight. Since they're so afraid of cameras, like do it while most people are asleep. Okay, it looks like there's gonna be a better view from here of what's going on. Hey Bernadine, you're awesome, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna be covering this whole thing pretty much from start to finish. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Probably two, three hours. How's it going? Yo, check the, oh, they got, they got the media here as well. I don't know who that is, Global News, CTV. Yo, check out all these cops, that's crazy. They got like 10, 15 cops lined up on this side, 10, 15 cops lined up on that side. Yo, and that bearded cop, in, ca in case you guys don't know, the bearded cop you see over there, standing right there. If you go to Beely, her name on here is always filmed the VPD. She's actually got a video on here of that cop, like her daughter. She saw like a police incident happening in the apartment she was living in. Right here in the downtown east side somewhere, like they were arresting, they had some person on the ground possibly going through mental health issues. And he was one of the cops that was arresting the person. 
and uh, her daughter actually came out of her room and started filming the whole thing and the guy actually started running towards her like taking his gun out like I don't know like and he actually like screamed at her to go back inside I don't know if she, if she kept filming was was she gonna get shot by him or something like that's a crazy response to filming Okay, apparently they're gonna do an interview with one of these cops <laughs> Yo look at the look at the side eye some of these cops are giving me <laughs> Uh, Vancouver is amazing for the most part. Again, most of the Vancouver does have like a mental health crisis going on, affordable housing crisis, addictions crisis. But it's tragic. But pretty much every city, every big city is going through that type of thing. Nah, that's not true. I know some people bring that up like anytime I do a live about this stuff like somebody brings that up It doesn't matter whether it's Democrat or Republican or conservative here in Canada. It's conservatives and liberals Like before right now, it's a liberal in office Justin Trudeau and before him there was Stephen Harper He was a conservative and all of these issues have been going on since then like these are new issues They've been going on and on and again politicians. They pretty much just keep packing the Passing the buck. They haven't really been doing anything. Like, it doesn't matter which party is in office. Like these problems have continued. They've exacerbated pretty much all politicians. Anything that has to do with vulnerable poor people, it's gonna get ignored for the most part. It's gonna get like deprioritized. Hey, I'm gonna put my gimbal on so this thing's more steady. Yeah, they're gonna. Apparently they're gonna use force if necessary like the amount again the, the amount of cops they have The way they're blocking off the streets where they're trying to block the view as much as possible You can tell like there's probably gonna be force used <coughs> In evicting unhoused people. There's probably gonna be possessions that get thrown away damaged things like that Okay, I'm gonna put my gimbal on Yo, what's happening? Hey, nice. Yo, loving the outfit. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, pleasure to see you. Oh, hey. I'm glad you're down here. Awesome. I was telling them, I was like, my friend's down there. And they're like, no, you're not allowed to. I was oh, like, no. but my friend is there. <laughs> Yo, this Foxy. Are you doing it live as well? Yeah. Awesome. It's live inception. Yo, Foxy, Miss Moxley, follow yeah, her if, follow if you haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh. Right over the front there. I got my signs and I set up a tent down there. Oh, nice. Yo, she's amazing. I'm glad she's down here. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's get the gimbal out. Yeah, exactly. Street sweeps kill. Like imagine the stress this is, this is putting those people through, like being homeless, it's got to be like well, obviously anyone that's experienced homeless, homeless, it's got to be one of the 
like most stressful things a person can go through, daily stress. You're thinking about your next meal. You're thinking about, is somebody gonna jump me while I'm sleeping? Is somebody gonna rob me if I'm sleeping? Are the cops gonna come harass me? Are the city staff gonna, like just stress on a, on a day-to-day basis, like a high level of stress. And again, then you got this happening. You don't have anywhere to go. Imagine what, what they're feeling. Some of these unhoused people, they got nowhere to go. The cops are like pretty much removing them forcefully from the only homes they know. Like that's crazy. Like no, where's the compassion? Where's the empathy? I think she's an I think she's an activist. I'm not totally sure, but okay. I'm gonna cross the street. Check this out. I just gotta run. I'm sorry. I don't have a moment right now. Okay. Oh, that's the professional liar. <laughs> oh, that's. That's the Steve Addison guy. He's the one that feeds lies to the media and stuff. Anytime there's a police situation that happens, anytime there's a police brutality, he's the one that spins the stories, feeds the police narrative to the media. Yo, Keisha, what's going on? Yeah, I know roller girls here. Apparently there's mixed feelings about her. Some people like her, some people don't like her. I don't I don't know much about her. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, that's actually one of the few. Anytime I've seen that guy, he's been pretty friendly, so that's one of the possible few good cops in the area. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on this. She stalks you 24-7? Really? You two know each other? What's the, what's the reason behind that? How's it going? Chief police ran away from me. He's actually here? The yeah, chief the of chief police? of police ran away from me. Oh, that wasn't the chief. That was one of the sergeants. He's the one that talks to the media and stuff. But I know. That guy seems terrible. He's not the chief though. The chief wouldn't even probably... He's too much of a coward to show up to this probably. Yeah. Oh no, major, major Karen alert. <laughs> Yo, major Karen alert. That's good. Okay. I know. That's gotta be one of the biggest Karens in existence right there. Keisha, do you guys still hook up sometimes? Do you guys still get along, you and you and the Karen over there? Yeah, roller girl, that's the right. Oh, that's messed. Yeah, so the streets closed off all the way up to Carroll Street, maybe beyond that. Okay, how many tents? There's probably like at least 40 or 50 tents left. I don't know how long this whole thing's gonna take. It's probably gonna be like two, three hours. Hey Carol, thank you for pinning that, appreciate it. And yeah, Roller Girl over there, obviously not everyone, not everyone's a fan of hers, but she actually took the she actually took the cops to court and she won against them. 
Yeah, and she, uh, she's done, apparently she's done a lot of good for trans rights, stuff like that, so. That's awesome, it takes guts to go up against the cops. Apparently they arrested her. I don't know what they were accusing her of, like what she was arrested. I kinda, I haven't read the whole story, but yeah, I kinda skimmed through the story. She was arrested and they were, they kept referring to, to her as a he. They weren't using her proper pronouns or something like that and she filed a human rights complaint against them and she won. Hey Musin, what's going on? Thank you for the gifts, appreciate it. And again, that's another subject that not everyone, the whole, the trans movement, all that, like not everyone. There's plenty of people that support it. There's been a protest against it too. And, I mean, they might as well be security guards if they're just, it's like they're cosplaying as security guards. Thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars of public funding being spent with on dozens of cops just standing around doing absolutely nothing, just like looking, gawking off into the distance. All of this money could have been spent on, act, on helping the unhoused people. Like they're probably gonna waste like a million bucks on this whole eviction operation thing. That could have be, that could have gone towards housing projects. It's crazy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go inside Carnegie, try to film from the top floor. I don't know if they're gonna get hostile or not. There was a, it was about three, four months ago. I was filming like a police incident that started outside Carnegie Community Center, but then it went inside and I went inside to film like the rest of it. And they got totally, they freaked out. Like the security guard started putting his hands on me. They tried kicking me out and stuff. They tried to get me arrested, but the cops refused to arrest me because of course you can film in a public building. Then they locked me out, it was crazy. So I don't know what the, I'm gonna go to uh, the Carnegie side. Try to go inside Carnegie and film from like the top floor. Oh, that's pretty cool. Eh? <laughs> nice. That good. Okay, it's probably a <laughs> Apologize about the cough. Okay, it's probably a bad idea to have my gimbal on right now. Exactly, there's actually people, there's actually people <coughs> working like two or three jobs and they can still barely afford to make ends meet. There's people working like two or three jobs that have been going to the food banks. Like the demand for food banks is so high right now, it's crazy. There's like lineups around the block apparently. <coughs> oh, that's actually... Yo, that's the Karen security guard right there that actually locked the... Uh, when I was filming inside there, she actually locked the doors. Hey, what's going on? Hey, that's a cool looking cape. <laughs> I like that cape. What does that represent? Like, oh, Peace. nice. Okay, I gotta get me. I gotta get me one of those capes. <laughs> Right now. 
They're asking people's address, what? It's none of your business what his address is. <coughs> oh, see, look, it's, it's very possible, like, look at it. They've done this in the past, like, the whole street sweeps thing. They've thrown away people's, like, prize, posse like, possessions and stuff. There's some propane tanks being taken away over there. Like some of these people obviously if one if they lose a tent they're not gonna be able they just can't go out and buy a new one some of them so if if any of their possessions get lost damaged thrown away it's not gonna be easy for them to replace it but they could have most of these people couldn't care less hey audrey's in here what's happening audrey Oh, it's live on the news, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a, I think Global News is down here, CTV News, possibly CBC as well, like most of them are down here. Yeah, since most of these cops are just standing around doing, I mean, there's probably some cops on here, out here watching the live. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing it's being covered by a lot of people. Yeah, and most of the cops, the city workers there, most of them are falsely claiming that the people they're evicting, they're being offered housing. But it's just, uh, it's pretty much fun. Like the people I've talked to here, some of the unhoused people down here that I've talked to, they've said that all they're being offered are either shelter spaces and like most of them shelter. A lot of them have had, they've <clears throat> they stayed in shelters, they've had a bad experience there, possibly traumatic experience there. And it's a short term, it's just a short term solution as well. Most shelters only have like two week or 30 day stays. So it's not a long term solution. And SROs are terrible too. That's the other option that's being offered apparently. But again, most there are people that have come out and said that they they would prefer to stay on the street, stay in a tent rather than be in an SRO. That's how terrible some of the SROs are. Exactly. And the thing is, some of them have pets too, right? It's like some of the unhoused people, they got pets here, and there aren't that many shelters in Vancouver that accommodate pets. Some of them have a lot. Hey, how's it going? Some of them have. Some of them have a lot of stuff too. In many shelters, they only allow like two bags worth of stuff. So what are they supposed to do with the rest of the stuff? Plus there's actually staff. There's some staff that are abusive at those shelters. Yo, look at that. They're actually tearing down that shelter. I don't know if anyone's in there. They're actually tearing down that shelter. I mean the tent. Yeah, I think so. Everything is on the block right now temporarily. Oh, we got a Karen over here. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, well, that's nice. There you go. I feel better now. Keisha, it's possible. Like, if there's any tents, if there's any tents and stuff that are left unattended, it's just gonna get trashed. All the belonging and stuff, it's gonna, it's gonna get trashed. Yeah, that Karen's insane. It's it's terrible. Like how some privileged people, they're just. They have this hostility towards the homeless people, right? They villainize them. They actually buy into the whole stereotype thing that they're hardened criminals, they're drug addicts, they're junkies, things like that. And they actually, there are Karens that actually support this kind of thing. Even though, like, what if, I mean, if they wound up in this situation, they would probably be singing a different tune. No way, I was there. No, I'm just saying. Karen. 
Exactly, most. I get a lot of unhoused people, they're not. They're not on drugs, they're not criminals, they're some of the nicest people no, you can meet. It's just a stereotype that's perpetrated by Karens. Oh, look at that. See, that guy, he's running towards his tent. He wasn't at his tent, so they already threw. They probably already threw a bunch of his stuff away. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, oh, nice. So they all have Oh, sir. Hey, sir. I'm, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> uh, So I, f I filmed a few of these evictions and most of them are given one hour. Like there's a note posted on their, there's a note posted on their tent. It gives them like one hour to get all of their things and get out of there. If not, then the cops, the cops come back, they throw again. They might be arrested, they might get all of their stuff thrown away. Hey, which view do you guys prefer? Should I stick around here or should I go to the other side? Over there, on like near Columbia Street. Yo, pick a view, any view. Other side, yeah, it looks like the other side might have a better view. Yeah, I know, Keisha, what's Serena? She's got a tent set up over there near Columbia Street. Okay, once they, once they dismantle that tent, I want to get that on film. Once that's over with, then I'll go to the other side. I came here at 9 o'clock, it was already underway. Uh, that's why I, yeah. I got here, because I saw you were streaming and I was just like, they oh, started nice. already. Yeah, so glad I you're here. And ran down here. The more I people to get down here and get onto the block before they did this shit. Oh yeah, they were kicking everybody off anyways. Like anybody that was, cops are going around asking, do you live around here? If not, then they were like, they're trying yeah, to get rid of witnesses. I just say, yeah, I live around here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any of the cops that actually know me by name, so. Oh. Now, have you had bad experiences with cops in the oh, city? Yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. yeah of course. Right? <laughs> I've got a lawsuit against them right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. I hope you win that. Uh, what, what is it? Do you, would you uh, mind sharing? So, share? at the Grand Union in yeah. um, September of 2020, yeah. um, they were trying to load an indigenous elder, yeah. a female, into the back of a paddy wagon in her wheelchair yeah. to take her home. Yeah. I was like, I'll pay for a cab. That's not right to put her and traumatize her by putting her in. That was so nice vehicle. of you, man. That's amazing. And yeah. one of the cops, he came up and yeah. he literally like put both hands on my chest and shoved me back 15 feet. Oh, cracked shit. my head on the ground. I got a grade three concussion. Yeah. And then they took me to the hospital for a mental health check because anyone that stands up to these guys has to be delusional. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the the uh, the hospital released me like six hours later. Yeah. And then I went to the professional standards unit. They found that there was no substantiating what I said. Yeah. And then the video came out of what happened because somebody actually caught it on cell phone. Yeah. And then they posted it online, Global News picked it up, oh, and nice. then they posted it all over the place. Catherine Urquhart did a story on it. Oh, sweet. And you, um, is that still online? Like, yeah. I would like to, I'd love yeah. to see that just, video. Just search uh, yeah. uh, Vancouver man shoved by VPD. Okay. Right? Right. And then yeah. you'll, you'll see it. Oh. And it just happened in front of the, the Grand Union. Oh. So the cop is facing criminal charges. Awesome. Because the Langley RCMP finally investigated, so he's yeah. being criminally charged, and then I filed a lawsuit yeah. last month to awesome to take him to court. So, 
Yo, that's the best way to hold them accountable. Lawsuit, that's pretty much but one, it's of, funny one of how, the only ways things are going to change for the better. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's funny how VPD, their professional standards unit, says, oh, we couldn't find any evidence to back this up. Meanwhile, they were... They were trying they were to ignore actually the going out and taking down the video. Every time it got posted, yeah. they were making sure the video got taken down. Yo, sorry you went through that, but yeah, that's uh, that's awesome that you fought back. Deal is telling you a message that he's fucked. Five 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 one one six. The crowd can keep an eye. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at how many vehicles they've rented to come down here. Yeah, it's it. They, they've got this one. Yeah. This is, you can tell by looking at it, this is not someone's personal vehicle. Yeah. This is a rental vehicle. <laughs> they've got <laughs> that one, got a couple more that are down there. This whole operation is probably going to cost like in the millions of dollars. They could have used that for housing, right? To actually help these people. It's insane. Two million plus over today and tomorrow is what really? they're, what the estimates are for That's all crazy. of the cops, all of the city workers, fire department, all that kind of stuff. And look at this. Like, so this is how they're packing stuff into the... Uh, oh, there's a good view from here. So here's a good view of how they're actually packing stuff into the back of the truck. That's insane. There's like no organization. Do they even know what belongs to who? Like, like how much of that stuff is going to get lost and destroyed? And you'll see, so you guys, you'll see these bins here. Yeah. It's a, the black bin that says personal storage. Yeah. When you're down on the streets here, you get one of those. That's it? It keeps all of your stuff in. That's what you get. All of your personal belongings, is, they tell you to put it into a trash bin. They don't oh, even no. give you like a Walmart rubber tote. They give you a trash bin put all of your belongings inside of you. Exactly, good point. this is how yeah. we think of you. You're trapped. Exactly. Just put it in here. Got their uh, their media tent set up on Columbia there. Yeah. So, like, awesome. If you have any questions, you can go and ask them. And I'm like, I already know what the media liaison is going to tell me, right? Like it's the same stuff that you tell people all the time. Oh, really? There's actually a media liaison here. Uh, I think yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah. So I might actually pay him a visit. You go through here. You have to go down to Pender, all the way down Pender, and then down to Columbia. Oh, yeah. But all they're going to tell you is when you ask them what's happening with the belongings, oh, we're going to store it for 30 days. Where are you going to store it? Oh, yeah. well, we don't know yet. Okay, well, where are the people going to go? Oh, well, BC Housing and Advocates are here to, to help them. But then as soon as all of this is done, all of those people are going to be back on the streets. No one is actually going to exactly. be those today. That's but all of these guys, every last one of these cops, all of these fire rescue people, yeah. all of the city workers, they're all going to their homes, their condos, their apartments, right, exactly. all of their nice warm places while everyone else is going to have to be back out on the street because all the shelters are full. Because they don't have money to pay for more shelter spaces, yeah. but they have money to hire a hundred new cops exactly. and pay for this kind of stuff, which isn't needed. And they were supposed to give people seven days. They were supposed to come by today yeah. and hand people a seven day notice to decamp. Uh -huh. And then in a week, they were supposed to come down and do all this. But because it accidentally got leaked yesterday morning, yeah. they're like, well, we can't do that anymore. We don't have the element of surprise. So we're going in <laughs> tomorrow morning. Three million. Hey, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go to the Columbia side for a bit. I think. Uh, let's see what's going on over here.
this is the worst possible way to spend two or three million dollars. I get three million dollars, that could buy, like how many, that could go towards modular housing or something. They probably, I don't know how many units, that could easily pay for at least, I don't know how many units of modular housing, but. Hey Ginger, you're amazing. Whoa, it's already at like 58,000 likes. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for the likes. Any new subs? You're amazing. Guys, you just gotta take other under under photo. We live over there in Bendy Hotel. Sorry? We live in Bendy. Bendy. Okay, for over there, it looks like there's a tent actually getting. Looks like they're trashing one of the tents over there. Gotta go around. Yeah, on the other side, yeah. Exactly. Apparently there's actually going to be some housing available in the summertime as well. Like it's, it's possible the reason they're rushing this is because tourist season is co coming up. There's going to be people coming to Vancouver. There's going to be people coming to Vancouver from all over the world. And obviously like seeing, seeing the downtown, seeing how many people are living on the street in a city like as rich as Canada, like it's, it's embarrassing for the government. So that's probably part of the reason there's such an urgency on their part to like get rid of all the tents, evict the unhoused people. Yeah, there's a bunch of convenience stores. Uh, it's mostly yeah, it's mostly like abandoned storefronts. And st Is there a person slumped over? Nah, they're gonna be okay. Oh, shit. Hey, you know. Oh. Uh, so pretty much all the way from Main Street all the way down to I think Abbott Street they got it closed off It's just like in my opinion, it's just disgusting. It's offensive, like how much money is being spent on evicting the unhoused people. Again, there's so many better ways that money could have been spent.
yo, I think there's actually like a protest kind of starting up. Uh, there's a dude yelling like, fuck the police. Giving the finger to the cops. Stop the streets! Fuck the police! Hey man, like... Whoa, that dude's got some passion right there. That's a major passion right there. Oh, you met him before? Oh, so. Oh, cool. They're doing interviews the with that, uh, unhoused people. To, uh, they even got uh, they even got the park yeah, rangers yeah. down here as well. Yeah, I mean, the, then again, if you have to wait for the displacement, where are they going to go? Where are they going to actually go? I know where you're heading. Where? Okay, the man. Exactly. I have most of them are probably going to head towards. Yeah, so yeah, most of them are probably gonna head towards Crab Park because like that's the only remaining safe place for unhoused people now because the court actually the Supreme Court actually ruled on that that they can't be evicted from Crab Park until there's alternative accessible affordable housing available to them so I think a lot of that that encampment there's just like 20 30 people there right now but it's probably gonna grow now She's in a purple jacket. Oh, really? Which one? Oh, that one right there. Yeah, she seems like an awesome person. So they're not even allowing seniors to go over. I think she actually lives on this block or something. They're denying her access to the sidewalk. Oh, easy. Whoa, whoa. Keisha, you're awesome. Ginger's. Ginger's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're going to. It's crazy. Like this, there's no way this should have been allowed to happen. Like somebody should have stepped in here. This is basically, uh, this is just trampling on people's human rights. This is insane. Like how can this be allowed to happen in Canada? Like where are they gonna go? There's got there's hundreds, thousands across BC. There's like thousands of unhoused people. Like where exactly? And one of the other things that a lot of these unhoused people, they've got, not only are they dealing with homelessness, right? But to go along with that, a lot of them, or they've got, they're also dealing, experiencing mental health issues. They're also experiencing addictions issues. Like how dangerous, how disgusting is it that, you know, there's people going through, again, homelessness, addictions, crisis, uh, experiencing addictions, crisis, they're experiencing mental health issues, and still they're getting kicked out. Right? 
I really thought they did. Yeah, it's my emotional support. It's my anger support. I have yeah, school support. I have mental health diagnosis. If I lose my animal, I will sorry, I will do something. Okay, so this guy, he appears to be sharing a story. I think, I don't know if his animal got taken away or if somebody threatened to take away his animal. Like he says he's got a, I believe it's a dog that he's got for emotional support. Yeah, gorgeous dogs. Yeah, okay, for anyone just tuning in, this is Vancouver, Canada, downtown east side. So the unhoused people, again, across Vancouver, Beast, Vancouver, one of the most expensive cities in the world. Rent, rent here, it can be anywhere from like $1,000 to $3,000 just for like a ramshackle, like one bedroom. So again, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big, uh, large unhoused population in BC, probably like thousands across BC. And a large large concentration of them are here in the downtown east side on East Hastings Street. So they got like a pretty much military operation going on here with like dozens, maybe hundreds of cops, dozens of city workers. All the unhoused people are being evicted. Some of their tents are probably going to get destroyed. Like if a tent's left unattended or something, it's basically going to get trashed. If belongings are left unattended, that's going to get trashed. So, and they don't have anywhere to go. There's not enough shelter space to accommodate everybody. Like even, there's people getting turned away. Like Union Gospel Mission, that's one of the main like shelters in the area. And they actually did a story that, like the news did a story that they've been turning away dozens of people every single day. So there's people getting turned away from shelters because there's not enough room. And yeah, it's insane. I don't know where these people, anywhere that they go, they're gonna be harassed, right? It's insane. Like, they go to parks, they get harassed over there. They set up tents, they get harassed over there. And yet, there's not enough adequate, the, the government, the provincial government, the federal government, like the last five, 10 years, they haven't been investing properly in affordable housing. Like, there's, there's probably been double the amount of like luxury condos and stuff that have gone up in the last five, 10 years compared to like actual affordable housing places and again rising cost of living inflation all of this adds to it it's crazy it's insane to see the number of condos and stuff that have luxury condos and all that so many of those have sprung up like around down to, like all over bc right but again like compare that with the number of affordable housing places that have gone up okay. oh cool that guy's doing an interview and, and that guy's awesome. He's an advocate as well. Again, he was the one earlier that was sharing his story about kind of he was trying to help an elderly indigenous woman and the cops started getting aggressive with him. They actually assaulted him. He's in the process of filing a lawsuit against him. He actually lives in the same building as us on uh, East Hastings Street. True. Cool. Hey, Revenge, you're amazing. Thank you for the... Thanks for the gifts. Oh, yeah, what's going on over there? Oh, there's like a protest. There's kind of a protest forming over over there. Okay, I don't want to get... Some of these cops are probably like itching to falsely arrest me. <laughs> so I don't know if it's cool to go over there. But yeah, I'm going to go over there because it looks like... Let's see what's going on over there. Hey, and there's Serena right there. Yeah, she's doing an interview with, I don't know what station that is. Possibly Global CTV. 
Oh, there's... Oh, yeah, there's kind of like a protest <laughs> building here. And it, yeah, it's horrible what the cops are doing, but I don't, I don't recommend like doing the whole fuck the, like the whole maybe cut, like coming down here screaming fuck the popo and all that. That's probably not the way to handle. Oh shit, that dude's gonna get arrested. Oh shit, dude, dude. Oh no, yo, that guy's gonna get arrested. Yo, chill, bro, chill. Yo, bro, watch out. You don't want to get false like arrest. Oh shit. Oh, this is insane. Okay, so they haven't reached this point yet, right? After they finish, after they finish over there. After they finish over there, then I guess they're gonna do this. Clear this area. And again, downtown East, I need... It's mostly a vulnerable, like poor kind of poor population in this area. So their needs don't really get addressed. It's ignored by the city. They've actually cut off like mail services here for weeks at a time. They've cut off maintenance services here for weeks at a time. So there's a reason that there's barely any trash cans in the area. There's barely any washrooms in the area. So don't... Uh, this is the downtown east side. Hey, have y'all been asked to move yet? Oh. Hey, you would, I know, exactly. You wouldn't believe this was Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's people playing. There's a dude playing fetch right on the street. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, I don't want to get hit by a ball. <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome looking dog. <coughs> Fuck the BPD. Mm. Mm. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. I thought he was going to throw it at me. Nice. Keisha, all your friends are down here, that's awesome. Yo, check out the size of that dog. What kind of dog is that? Hey, so they got park ranger security over there. What the? Oh, that's what that is, Pressa Canario. Nice. You don't see, you don't see that breed very often. How's it going? <coughs> Jack Russell. Yeah, and th this shows you the discrepancy between how people are treated depending on depending on how many zeros they got on their bank. Okay, is this something you would see on the west side or whatever? Of course not. You wouldn't see people being treated like this on the west side. It's bullying. That's what this is. It's basically bullying. Just picking on the vo picking on the most vulnerable people in society. Hey, some awesome graffiti over there. <laughs> Park rangers standing around doing next to nothing.
Yeah, you know, that's the excuse. That's where this. That's where this whole thing started, right? They're trying to. They're trying to justify evicting all the unhoused people by claiming that the tents are a fire hazard. But they get the options that they're being given. Like one of the only options they're being given is going to an SRO. And again, last year there were like a record-setting number of SRO fires. Multiple people were killed in SRO fires. So SROs are actually even more, like much more, of a fire hazard than tents. And yet the city does nothing about. And th they know that too. They've known that for a long time, but nothing's being done about the SROs. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm almost ashamed today to be okay, well, to like be a Canadian <laughs> to be a van in Vancouver like this whole thing is insane Over here. like how is this allowed to happen like there should have been intervention from like somebody federal government thought this shouldn't have been allowed to happen uh, okay. mm. uh, oh no actually look up the story like recently global news they actually did a series on some of the SROs in this area it's kind of like showing showcasing how the terrible conditions of some of them so just look up vancouver sro ctv S global news sros and you can see how horrible some of them are very few of them are actually in decent condition the majority of them are in horrible condition most of them are run by slum lords <laughs> she's filming you from outside who are you talking about <laughs> Hey, there's Serena, she's got her stuff, she's setting up her signs and everything over there. Uh, what about the... Uh, Google, uh, Google SRO Vancouver. Yeah, so again, it's crazy. So we got people losing their livelihoods, but like losing their homes, the only homes they know. And these cops are standing around, doing absolutely nothing, pretty much gossiping with each other. He said, oh, you stayed in an SRO? We've been, we've been in an SRO as well, and it was absolutely horrible. Like, bed, bed bug infestation, cockroach infestations, like, water damage. Again, they barely fix anything. They try to steal money from you. It's insane. Like, one of the worst experiences you could have, probably, is being in an SRO. Like, those, exactly, toxic mold. It's a, it's a hell of most of them are health hazards pretty much like they should have been the Balmoral Hotel over there like that's one of the oldest and worst SROs and it's finally getting torn down apparently it has asbestos and all this stuff in it so the tear down process is going to be a longer one than usual because again they got to be careful with the asbestos and stuff like that but yeah asbestos is another thing most of the SROs probably have asbestos You know, it's, just, it's like, how can we make the homeless even more homeless? That's all. It's insane. Oh. Cool. Yeah, and apparently, <laughs> apparently this operation is gonna cost like upwards of two million dollars, three million dollars. Think of how much that money could have been. We've got a head mental health crisis in Vancouver. There, again, there's an addictions crisis. There's a healthcare crisis. Two, three million dollars. It could have hired. How many? They could have. That could have been spent towards housing. That could have been spent towards hiring, hiring more psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, nurses. But instead, it's gonna be spent on this whole, on all these cops standing around, doing as little as possible. True.
Yo, there's some drumming going on over there. I think it might be the beginnings of a protest. Okay, I'm gonna go check that out. I hear drumming and chanting going on over there. Yo, no, Kennedy Stewart, he, he gets a bad rap, but that dude was actually, he wasn't that bad. Like, he's way better than the guy. Nice. <laughs> Most people couldn't care less about that Karen. Let her film out of the window. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, I know, Ken Sim, that dude's terrible. He's pretty much in the in bed with the cops. They basically conspired to win him the election. It was the first time, like the cops, they're not supposed to get political, right? They're not supposed to get involved in political matters. But that was the first time that they actually endorsed the mayor. When the last year, when the election was going on, they actually endorsed Ken Sim. And as soon as he got into office, one of the first things he does Again, even though we're going through a mental health crisis, addictions crisis, healthcare crisis, one of the first things he does is gives like $20 million to the police department so they can hire a hundred new cops. Even though the last thing this city needs is more cops. I mean, that shows you there was some kind of backroom deal that happened here. You endorse me, as soon as I get elected, I'm gonna hand over millions of dollars to you guys. Yeah, not, there's not a lot of people that wear masks these days. Yeah, there's nothing wrong if somebody chooses to wear a mask there's nothing wrong with that but yeah most people choose not to wear a mask these days it looks like Pleasure to see you. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> nice. Just checking it out. Seeing awesome. Good for you. Yeah. I know. I tried to go in and. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. They have uh, Indigenous days on, and then one of the elders, Ronnie, yeah. two other First Nations. Yeah. I wanted to go in to sign. Oh, so oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Can use my power. Yeah, they should. Me. You should be allowed access. That's crazy. Well, the valley said they're only allowing three Indigenous people. At least they've got a liaison. Like yeah. they know that's that's kind of that's a positive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Nice. Pretty sad, eh? I know it's insane. It's hard to wrap your head around it. Like, where are they gonna go, right? Like, apparently, most of them don't even have anywhere to go. It's just geography. Yeah. They're going to find another place, you know, to set up. Oh, nice. The city, yeah. the uh, Salvation Army is building that nine-story apartment building just down here in Cordova. Yeah. And it's 
sounds like, you know, the ball moral is going to be pulled down there doing this asbestos abatement right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Before they start gutting it and before they... Yeah, it's probably going to be like a year, maybe six months before that that, that whole thing's ready though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Definitely three years for the nine story building down there. Yeah. Oh, there's my boss. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, you guys do amazing work. Like, pleasure meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> Film the Asian. That's actually one of the possibly good cops. <laughs> like, anytime. I filmed some police incidents where he was kind of at the scene and yeah, he not, not once has he tried to kind of interfere with filming, stuff like that, unlike so many of the other cops here. Yo, Serena's got a Foxy Miss Moxie. She's got a tent set up right in the middle of the road. Okay, it's possible somebody's gonna get arrested. Y'all be careful, dude. Be careful. They're looking to arrest anybody for any reason, pretty much. <coughs> Holy shit. <coughs> oh, shit. <coughs> Holy shit. Oh. Hey, what's going on? Nice to see you. Oh, shit. And yeah, I think that's Ramona. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Ramona? Hey, nice to finally meet you. Nice to finally meet you. Awesome. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? How are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> that's awesome finally getting to meet you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you know. Yo, Saria, you guys got a nice setup over here. Yeah. We don't got homes, man. I was like, Are you really? Oh, here now. oh, that's crazy! Yeah, so you're going through that. Yeah. Awesome, Matt. They, they think that everyone here on the downtown east side is refusing shelters, refusing housing. There that's not the, the case. Way. There's nowhere for us to go, and they're taking they're our tents cold. away. And you have children Six too. You got two, tents two young children. Taken down since August. What's there left to fucking take? Six hundred. You can look it up. I know it's insane. So yeah, some awesome signs too. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, pleasure meeting y'all. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, what's happening? Uh, Sorry, what was your name on? Shauna Taylor. Shauna Taylor. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Hey. <laughs> oh no, oh, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> I made That's you drop okay. your cigarette. No, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, getting to meet some awesome people over here. Well, my daughter is here. Is she? Right there. Oh, and cool. And down if I'm going to let these city workers and the VPD yeah. take away what little she has. Is she's one of the, she's on house? She's, she's one of the underhouse, yes. So yeah, sorry she's going through that. Well, you know what? Her, her honey, yep. her partner, yep. will have a place in a couple of weeks. Okay, so right, it's oh, just they're good. waiting to get into housing. Yeah. So this is all they have. Yeah. And these assholes, thanks to Mayor Ken Sims. I uh, know. This is like one of the worst things I've. Seen. I can't even believe. Still, right now, I can't believe this whole thing's happening. Like it's insane. You know what? Uh, this is a form of genocide. Yeah, it, it, they're yes. putting these people in more of a harm's way exactly. that they're already in. I know. Especially the women down here. Having That's this it. here, yeah, they're watched. They take care of each mm, other. The women it. are a little bit safer here than being displaced away from down here. It's the same thing with people experiencing addictions too, right? Yes. Like, like here, they're out in the open. Yeah. If something happens, if there's an overdose situation, they're gonna I'll get help right and stuff. Now, yeah. This may look rough, yeah. but these people, they take care of each other. Exactly. I've seen that too. They yeah, take yeah. care of each other. If yeah. there's an overdose, 
guaranteed every one of these people along here yep. have two or three Narcan kits. I've seen it, yeah. I've you seen know? It. Yeah, I've seen people saving lives around. It's How is this okay? I know. We don't live in a third world country, but they're being treated like third world people. Exactly. Well, trust me, the Western world has become more of a third world country than the rest of the third world. <laughs> this is absolutely disgusting. I know. Disgusting. Well, let me put it this way. I was in China about 14 years ago. I was in Guangzhou, the third biggest city in the whole country. Oh, <laughs> oh cool. They're going to get an interview. She's done a uh, nice. And check out Ramona shirt. That's what. That's Foxy Miss Moxie, and that's Ramona shirt. Like, check him out. They do some amazing work. They, I can't believe Ramona shirt. I can't believe she's uh, she's still on house. She's got two young children. And I believe, like, one of them is kind of experiencing some medical issues, too. So it's insane that, you know, she's having to go through that. Especially, like, with the young children. They're both, like, yeah, they're both, like, under 10 years old, I think. So, I mean, it's hard enough being a parent, I guess. But being a parent that's having trouble finding affordable housing. Look, she she's such a coward. That Karen over there, she's such a coward that she's filming out of her window. Uh, like, why don't you... Is she afraid to come down here or something? Ginger, hey, thanks for pinning that, exactly. Yo, she's actually throwing stuff out of a window. That chick is psycho. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, some people are, oh no. I think some people are gonna start getting arrested. It's kinda... Huh? Oh shit, Who's, who threw that? Did you see who threw that? Oh shit. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Oh shit. Okay, so I don't know who threw that or where that came from. Like, did that come from a window or something? But yeah, tensions are rising now. I don't know. It's possible something's gonna happen. And just look at them again people are losing their homes i guess some of these people they're not not only are they experiencing homelessness they're experiencing mental health issues they're experiencing addictions issues trauma related issues and still they're getting kicked off kicked out of the only home they know <laughs> meanwhile the cops just stand around they couldn't care less it looks like well most of them anyways Got some drumming going on. Might have some trolls in here. Yo, most of, most of the media is like concentrated in that area because again, like ten on that in that area, like tensions are kind of rising. It seems like. Like a rest might start happening, something might go down over there. So yeah, most of the media is like lined up over there right now. Yeah, this is horrible. And of course, indigenous indigenous people, they're actually more more at risk of being unhoused as well. Of, of course, other things, police brutality, being killed by the police. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, nice. Gorgeous dogs. Oh, damn. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Man. You guys are awesome. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Yo, check out that dog. That's why we're here. We woke up and saw your live. Oh, really? Awesome. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> nice.
Yeah, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, I miss having a dog so much. When we we had like this amazing like German Shepherd mix dog, and we move when we moved out to the like if you're renting like Vancouver is not it's not a pet friendly it's not really a pet friendly place. Very few places actually you know accommodate pets if you're renting. So we actually we had to give our dog to the SPCA when we moved out here because they again they wouldn't accommodate pets here. Yeah, we even volunteered to give like a pet deposit, like five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. It didn't matter to us as long as we got to keep our dog, but they wouldn't agree to accommodate pets. Sure. Hey, I'm gonna do a close up. That's an amazing That's, that's that's like powerful stuff her, just her dr her drumming or singing that's powerful stuff I know that's an amazing hoodie I gotta get that hoodie I'm gonna ask her where she got Yo, I don't know what it is about that, her like that music, but you know I'm starting to get kind of emotional too, just listening to that, watching that. That's that's powerful stuff. No displacement, eviction kills. Anyway. The city of Vancouver, they should be ashamed of themselves. These cops, they should be ashamed of themselves. Like, it's disgusting how they're bullying, picking on the most vulnerable in society instead of helping them. Like It's disgraceful to Canada, it's disgraceful to Vancouver. Like, and this should not be happening. Yeah, that was an amazing performance. That's awesome. Excuse me, we're gonna have a truck coming through here. I need to ask you about it. Hey, that's an awesome outfit. Oh. Yeah, I know what a what a performance by that person. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do an interview with her. I don't know if she'd be if she wants to do an interview, but yeah, I'll try and talk to her. This 
She's Canada right. She's told you. Taxpayers. She's told you. Shame I'm on you. You tell me you care. On days and mornings, you're waking up to more Indian women in a in the landfills. When are you gonna start letting us have our have our relatives? They're underneath this concrete. It's not just those unmarked graves we're talking about, that's just the beginning. So yes, we're angry. Yes, we're enraged. As business as usual, right there, right there, business as usual. And this is how they handle it, if you resist. If you resist, this is who they bring. So keep standing up, keep rising, keep showing up. Shouldn't be the Indian women out here standing alone in our tears. Shame on you, Canada. Shame on you. Genocide no more. Enough is enough. Yo, I'm actually getting emotional like listening to that. That was amaz amazing. And she touched on a, she touched on a amazing and like awesome tragic point right there. So I mean, downtown east side, like a disproportionate number, like a large number of women and just people in general go missing here from the downtown east side. And over the years, like hundreds of indigenous and mostly, mostly indigenous women have gone missing from the downtown east side. There's actually, a, of course, a large movement going on called the Miss, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. Instead of putting resources towards that, again, this is three. This is gonna cost two, three million dollars. This whole evicting unhoused people, like that, could go towards that. How about putting more resources towards that? Yeah, like not that. I think recently, I, I believe it was in Winnipeg, there was actually a serial killer that murdered four, four women. And there were three of them, like one of them I think was unidentified, but three of them were indigenous women and they were, like he dumped them in a landfill and the cops didn't even, the police there, they didn't want to spend the money in recovering the bodies, but they're willing to spend money on things like this. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Hey Julie, pleasure to see you. What's going on? And and there's Bandu, I believe I believe that's Bandu. The people that are holding the sign up and he's a, I think he's a spokesperson for Bandu. I've seen I'm sus I'm subscribed to them on Twitter. Like they do uh, so much good in the community. They do a lot to help the unhoused people. And yeah, all the news outlets, all the news outlets are here. Yeah, they gotta make a permanent change to that song. The Canadian National Anthem. They totally gotta permanently change the lyrics.
Yeah, so I don't know how long it's possible this is gonna take like the entire day or part of the day, but it's already it started at nine o'clock, it's almost eleven o'clock now, so this is going it's going on two hours now. Yeah, and as you can see this is where most of the media are lined up right now. Like CTV News, Global News, C I think CBC, like they're all here. You got independent journalists over here. Yeah, if, if for those of you that don't know what's go anyone just tuning in, obviously this is Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada, downtown east side. So the unhoused people, there's a large concentration of unhoused people in this area. Again, Vancouver, one of the most expensive cities in the world. Most of these people, they don't have anywhere to go. Shelter spaces are at capacity, most of them, and there's other issues with shelters. SROs are one of the only other options, but most SROs are in terrible condition. They're not even, it's a danger to live, it's a health hazard living in one of those pretty much. So even though most of these people have nowhere to go, they're being evicted by the police. They got like a military operation going on here. There's hundreds of cops here, I think. There's dozens of city workers here and they're all, they're evicting the unhoused people. Some of them are probably, you know, getting their, they're getting their belongings destroyed. Oh, they're getting some of their belong, probably belongings destroyed. Tents destroyed. It's possible. Yo, it's awesome seeing the passion though. So many people, like so passionate. Yo, she spinning, she spinning the truth right there. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, I like that hoodie right there. <laughs> yeah. um. Exactly, like we just, we just recently moved, right? And it took us two months to find a place that was a thousand dollars. Like pretty much everything, almost, almost every place we looked at. $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 just for like a tiny one bedroom place. So given that climate, like where are they supposed to go? Like most people have been priced out of the market. Like most people, a lot of people that are on house, they're on income assistance, disability income assistance. And that's only, that's like poverty level. It might be below the poverty line, like disability income assistance, they're only getting like Thirteen fifty, I think, and regular so income assistance, it's only like seven, eight hundred dollars. So how are they supposed to afford a place and at the same time still be able to afford groceries and the basic necessities of life? Stop the sweeps! 
As all this is going on, as these passionate words are being spoken, check out the apathetic faces of most of the cops here. They could care less. They're going to pick up their checks. They're going to get paid more than they should. So check out the faces of the cops as this is going on. Most of them couldn't care less. Oh, see, look at that. That's insane. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna they're gonna dismantle, discard that tent now. I don't know if anybody's inside there, or if it's. So absolutely disgusting. So it looks like they're gonna trash. I don't think anybody's in there, so they're just gonna trash that tent. Disgusting. A couple people in my line that say hi. Oh, <laughs> like, awesome! The nice. Trash is there too. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, how you doing? Awesome guy. Also, we live in the same building. Me and him, we live in the same building. Yeah, so Amazing we're guy. Not, we're not just out here causing problems. We actually yeah. live in an SRO. Exactly. totally right about that it's possible someone it's possible again where are these people gonna go like the like that guy just said there's only like two shelter spaces available today I don't know where they're gonna go it's possible as a result of that I don't know 
again like a lot of the people like some well, at least some of the people experiencing homelessness they're also oh shit. they're also experiencing mental health issues some of them some of them are experiencing addictions issues so I don't know how this is gonna affect them have they been driven from the only home they know Like think about the mental toll this is going to take on some of these people. If somebody's already going through kind of mental health issues, addictions issues, homelessness issues, like imagine the enormous toll this is going to take on people. Okay, so watch as they dismantle this tent. Watch as they callously dismantle this tent. I think there's a woman in there. I heard, I heard that city Karen call out somebody's name, possibly Stephanie. So it's pos I think somebody's actually in there. It looks like maybe they don't want to come out. So oh, uh, this is all gonna be caught on camera. Oh. Hey, she's from CBC News. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so we're gonna get an up close shot of just how callously they dismantle these tents. And it looks like she doesn't want to come out, or I don't know how they're not even giving her time, I think. I don't know. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. No? Uh, I'm pretty sure this guy's alive. Come on, you're. Sorry, can I ask you, I'm from CBC, what's your, what's your relationship to this situation here? Uh, I, me and my mother, we kind of live in the area and I do some advocate work around here for unhoused people. Kind of trying to raise awareness about that kind of the situation going on here. Yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to bear witness this. I'm doing a live stream on TikTok right now. It's got like 3,000 viewers, so I'm kind of bringing this to as many people as possible. I want to show, again, I can't even believe this is happening in Canada. Most of them, they don't have anywhere to go. Right, this is a lot of them. Not only are they experiencing homelessness, but they're also going through mental health issues. They're going through addictions issues. So, like, I don't know. This is going to exacerbate some of those issues. So, it's just going to have such a negative effect on some of these people. And I, I just feel so much sympathy and compassion for them. And yeah, I'm just trying to bring this to the attention of as many people as possible. So you're watching what's happening with this tent. I don't know what's up the street further, but this is like the last tent. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah, it looks like mostly they're this sidewalk. Yeah. So what are you watching with this tent? Uh, yeah, so it looks like, I think there's a person in there, like Stephanie, I heard somebody call out, one of the city workers, so I believe they're gonna, I don't know if she's not coming out or what's happening here, but this is, obviously they're in the process, they're gonna, they're gonna evict her, the person, whoever's in there, I don't know if one person, multiple, but she's gonna be, that person's gonna be evicted. So just watch it unfold, see what happens here. Uh, yeah, from what I understand, like some people, even if, if the tents are left unattended, it's getting thrown away, right? Belongings, if, if uh, as they've been going through here, like anything that's been unattended, it's been trashed pretty much. Hey, thank you for covering this, it's awesome. Yeah, because this, this guy, this, again, this is one of the worst things I've, I've seen happen. I'm still kind of in, sh I'm in dismay kind of that this is actually happening. So this needs to be brought to the attention of as many people as possible. Hey, 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 hey,
Hey, do you mind if I, can I have a look at that sign? Can I have a look at that? I'm doing a live stream. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, man. I'm actually going to go back to... They're going to start dismantling the tent pretty soon. Oh. They've already done that, pretty much. This whole thing's a violation well, yeah. of rights, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get it on film, but this one's so close that we can actually... Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is why they're taking a lot more time with this. I know. They've been bulldozing down, down, they've been coming down this block. They've pretty much been bulldozing the entire blocks, right? But for this one, because we've got it up close, shot at this, like, cameras are pointed, like, multiple cameras are pointed here. They're taking their time with this one. Actually, most of the shop owners down here, they all know the uh, the people of the downtown east side that live here and are always around here. And the people that are down here, they're the ones that are supporting these businesses and keeping them in business. So yeah, that's a good point. Ranting, you should probably check your facts, my guy. This is Hastings. Where are you off to, sir? Where are you off to? Uh, so, if that was shot camps for a fire hazard, when we go out camping out in the middle of nowhere, I don't see a bunch of these guys out in the middle of campgrounds tearing down the house and pushing them out. Okay, it looks like they're gonna move in. The woman, I think she's still in. the tent, and they're just dismantling the tent. Oh, that's disgusting. You guys are fucking disgusting. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna come to your house and start dismantling it while you're inside. This is just deplorable on so many levels. See, so there's, there's the lady in there, there's a guy in there. And they've literally taken pieces of the tent off, they've taken off the one leg on that side. See, it is someone's belongings. That's how she moves her stuff around. She's, she uses that stroller to move yeah, her stuff yeah. around. They had to pull it out of the garbage bin and help her put it together. Which, well, I will say, it was nice of them to help her put it together. See, even the cop is just like, let's wait until they, they're done dismantling the tent. Not, let's wait until we've talked to this guy and figured out where he's going to go and help him out. Just, we're going to dismantle this, the tent. And this is the thing, even though most of these people have nowhere to go, like some of them, they just look shell shocked. Like, look at. Like she's got like a shock look on her, like it just. And if they refuse to leave, we got cops here ready to turn it into a criminal situation. There's nothing criminal going on here. It's people that they don't have enough affordable homes in the city. People are trying to survive any way they can. And that housing was a human right, but you see all of these people here. 
they're all willing to take housing away from these people and they don't care. That's the thing is that they don't have housing to put them into. All the shelters are full. And it looks like most of the cops have converged in this area now. Like they're pretty most much all of them are uh, Vancouver Fire and Rescue. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. in here. Technomancer? I'm not even paying that much attention to the screen right now. It's just like, why would the other live mute my comments? No, it's probably a troll or something. Possibly. I'm not reading for it. Yeah, this entire thing is just, this entire ordeal is pretty much like a human rights disaster. Yeah, I'm gonna get my charger on. Yeah. This thing's gonna die pretty soon. Okay, sorry about that. I've been filming for like two hours now, so phone's starting to die, gimbal's starting to die. I don't 
No, no, it's not gonna die. I got it. I got it plugged in now. So. It's basically an eviction, forced eviction. But normally, when you get evicted, they have to take you to court. They have to get a judge to sign off on it, and then the sheriffs can come out and kick you out, and stuff like that. But here, if you're homeless and you're on the streets, what they do is the city comes down with all of these trucks. They come down with garbage bins. They come down with fascists like this, and they just force you out of your tent. And all of these people, I live in the neighborhood, thank you. I live in the SRO. Like there's such a lack of dignity. This whole this whole process, they're basically just demeaning the unhoused people. Like just such a lack of compassion, lack of dignity on their part. Like look at their tent. He's still inside. Cops. Uh, how many cops standing around? City workers standing around, sticking their things in garbage bags, stripping their tent as they're inside. They don't have enough money to pay to put people in the house. It's not gonna fucking happen. The SROs are pretty much full and there's deplorable conditions. Yeah, think about the trauma. Yeah, a lot of these people, they're dealing with multiple issues at the same time. It's not just experiencing homelessness, as I said before. Some of them are experiencing health issues as well, addictions issues, uh, like health condition, possible like health issues. And a lot of them have experienced trauma as well. And ju this just adds to it. This is insane.
Like this is probably one of the most traumatic things a person can go through. Like having your, having your, having what you call your home, what you consider your home, ripped down in front of all these people. It's possible they're gonna try to arrest that person or something. The cops are looking over, they're putting up a sign right there called pushed out. The cops are looking over at them. So look at there's a mob of at least how many cops is that? There's gotta be at least ten cops, ten city workers, a mob of like twenty people surrounding this one tent. So that's the person that they just evicted. There was one other person in the tent as well. That's the person they just evicted. Yes. Thank you, three no of us. Problem. No problem. Oh, 
And look how some of them are trying to, it looks like they're trying to conceal their identities. I mean, they got glasses on, they got masks on, they got their hoodies on, they got their hats on. Uh, just keep, give it a minute, it's a bit tight there. You know, uh, they're, they're just uh, helping the people here in the camp to clean up the stuff. Did you hear how that cop phrased that? Apparently they're helping. These people are getting forcefully evicted and he just phrased it by saying that they're being helped. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna take this off the gimbal now. Gimbal's pretty much dying. Hey, it's possible. I apologize if it does happen. I got the battery pack. <laughs> I got a spare battery pack attached to it. But it looks like it's not charging fast enough, so it's possible it's gonna cut out. I apologize if that does happen.
arbitrarily exercising their power to create these illegal exclusion zones. Hey, thanks. Thanks for the advice. Yeah, that's what I did. I turned down the screen brightness and stuff. So hopefully it holds off for at least another hour. Yo, she's right about that. She's totally right about that. Makes a great point. Well said. They got pretty much, it seems like they emptied out like half the force just to come here and bully, bully the most vulnerable in our society. Hey, she's getting it. Oh, is it cool to go through here now? Is it cool to go through here now? I'll just give it one sec. Once they're done here, you, you can't. Hey, CBC, they're doing an interview. The woman that was in this tent, the one that just got evicted, CBC is doing an interview with her. Yeah, it's cool to go through here now, right? I wanted to do an interview with that woman. I wanted to do an interview with that woman, so is it fine to get through here? As soon as she comes out, we can ask her if she wants to do an interview with you. Oh. <laughs> 
guys told us to go out, otherwise we might get hurt. Sorry, yeah. Yo, you could just, again, that woman over there being interviewed by CBC News, she's the one that was in that tent that they just dismantled and evicted. And, you know, just the look on her face, it just seems like, you know, where is she going to go? I don't know if she has any idea, like... Yo, it's awesome how many like outspoken, passionate advocates there are. Awesome gathering here today, like so much support for the unhoused. Yo, it's good that they know, you know, at least they know they're not alone. There's people looking out for their interests, there's people that care about them. Yeah, and this this is like a dehumanizing experience too. Like some of these people, like it's such a it's such a blow to their dignity. It's ah, oh, I don't. This whole thing is just disgusting. Like, it's like they're not even being treated like human beings basically like, like imagine what this can do like just a mental mental physical emotional toll this is like on top of everything that they're going through like some of these people they've they've been experiencing homelessness for years and years they've been some of them have been experiencing mental health issues addictions issues without getting the support they need for years and to add this on top of that it just uh, like, it doesn't matter whether you have a home or not like how much money you've got there beg everyone pretty much everyone deserves respect everyone deserves dignity like this, this is this whole experience is stripping people of their dignity that's basically what they're doing Again, the police should be ashamed of themselves. The city should be ashamed of themselves. This is illegal action. Yo, I think the phone's gonna die. Fuck. Dave, can you get on mic for a bit? Yo, and, and I haven't really been paying attention to the screen, so you know any new like most of you are amazing. Like anybody that's you know showing compassion, sympathy towards the unhoused people that's that see how disgusting this is, how uncalled for this is. Like, thank you. City is creating uh, refugees out of the citizens. Hey, so T-shirt, what's going on? Thank you for the gifts. Appreciate it. Now they've been, you know, moved along again and, and made to make their way as best they can. And I don't even understand, like, what what is the fallout going to be here? Are all these people going to go to? I think they removed like 40 or 50 tents, evicted like 40, 50 people from here. Like, are they all going to go to Crab Park? Like, are they just going to move to a different street? And if they move to a different street, is the same thing 
gonna happen all over again? Are they gonna do this whole thing all over again? Like, I don't... Again, there's no plan in place. Almost pretty much none of these people have a permanent... Have, like, access to permanent housing, safe housing. So most of them, that there aren't enough shelter spaces. So most of them... Yeah, they're either gonna go to Crab Park or they're just gonna go to a different part of the street and set up, set up over there. And again, as soon as they do that, they're probably going to be harassed all over again, evicted all over again. So it's just a repeating cycle. It's insane. Exactly, housing is a human right. Okay, there's still some tents on there's still some tents left on this side. I don't know if they're gonna evict these. I don't know if they're gonna evict them as well or if they're gonna do this another day, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it all today. And there might be some trolls in here. Ignore the trolls. Hey, what's that device they're using? If you don't mind me asking, what is that thing? It's a DJI Osmo. Oh, is it? Oh, sweet. Does it take good video? Yeah, 4K. A 4K? Oh, shit. Thank you, appreciate it. No, no I gotta check that out. It's like a GoPro. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh shit yo I'm down Shit, I'm down to like 4% battery, so yeah, it's gonna die. <laughs> it's gonna die any minute now. I don't know why this isn't working. I got the charger on here, but for some reason I'm losing battery quicker than quicker than it's recharging. Yo, and this, this is just a surreal sight, just seeing this. Like seeing the whole like military operation pretty much against the unhoused people it's still I've been there for like two hours but it's still kind of surreal to kind of take this in see this whole thing happening uh. You have a power bank here in the area? Yo, get down here, get down here, <laughs> yo. You could save, you could save the live maybe. <laughs> hey, this is more important than work. <laughs> Oh, that's one of the dirtiest cops in Vancouver. Of course, he's here. Yo, that's uh, I've been falsely arrested twice, right? The second time I was falsely arrested, he was involved. One of the dirtiest, worst cops in the city.